Hey everyone, it's your music video maven Gabby. Welcome back to the Musicians Prime YouTube channel, the number one place for musicians to learn how they can leverage their careers with video. In today's video, I'm gonna teach all you musicians out there some basics of video editing. Specifically, six things that you need to know about your video editing software that is gonna make your life easier. Lately, the number one thing that I hear musicians have trouble with when it comes to making videos is the editing process. The problems include everything from understanding the language of the software to figuring out how to organize all the clips to figuring out where the fuck I find that tool that cuts the clips is. I hear you. So today we're gonna be going over what I consider to be the basic essentials of video editing software that I think all musicians need to know and be familiar with. And there are six of them, so yeah, let's get started. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be filming everything on my iMac, on the video editing software that I use, which is Final Cut Pro. Even if you're not using the same computer or software that I use, most of what I'm talking about can be easily found or translated in a, either the same or very similar way to how I'm explaining it. I know some people out there watching this use iMovie, for example, and a lot of the things that I talk about in Final Cut Pro can, all, can usually be applied to iMovie because it's, the programs are very similar. Final Cut Pro is just a little more of an advanced version of iMovie. So those two video editing softwares specifically, you know, go pretty hand in hand together for those who are watching and use that program. So the first basic thing that you wanna do before you even start editing is to make sure you get everything organized. Now, I'm gonna talk about this in two different parts. So the first part of organizing within video editing is to first make sure you have a folder that you're organizing all your clips in. Like this, especially you know as you do many more video projects, you have one place to source all of the footage that you've taken. You don't, you know, you don't have to go searching around your computer, various storage spaces to find the clips and you know and just in case you may need to go back and fix something and have to source a certain clip you know everything's all in one spot you don't have to go searching everywhere for it so I like to keep my uh, footage all in one folder right here so I'm gonna open this up I'm gonna go to video this is where I keep all my video clips musicians prime YouTube channel and then I like to sort my videos by the finished videos which is you know the finished product and the raw footage which is essentially everything I've taken directly off my camera and nothing's and nothing's touched, nothing's edited. So we're gonna go in here. I've made a, a folder specifically for the sample video that I'm gonna show you how to edit. And normally what I would also do in these folders is to create an extra folder, you know, uh, separating which cameras I've used. So for example, iPhone might be one camera and maybe like a DSLR camera, like a Canon Mark IV. And this is where I'd be organizing the footage by, you know, the camera I've used. But since I only really, I mostly use my iPhone for these kinds of projects, I just, I don't organize them. But if I were using multiple cameras, I would do that. So anyways, I have all my clips organized in this folder. Now we're gonna open up Final Cut Pro. Now, the next way that we wanna think about organization is how we're organizing your clips within the editing software itself. So in Final Cut Pro, and you know, again, this is gonna be similar in most uh, editing softwares, we have what's called libraries, uh, projects, and events. Now, how I like to think of this, the library is like the big category. So basically for any, so for example, I do video work for Foreplay Clarinet and for this uh, Musicians Prime YouTube channel. And you know, those are like the, my big categories. It's for very specific, I have, you know, those are my very specific big projects that I do. And then underneath the, li the those libraries, I have very specific projects within that category. So for example, with Musicians Prime, I have a special project for Instagram posts, for you know, challenges I might do, split screen videos, and YouTube videos. Those are the projects that I have within this umbrella of you know, the Musicians Prime library of videos. 
And then under these projects, like for example, we'll go into YouTube videos, I can create new projects. And there, then it creates a project with which I can you know, work on a specific video. Now to create a new project, event, or library, all I have to do is go to File, New, and then I can select Library, Event, or Project. And then I can organize it in whichever way I want. Now, before we go on to even importing any clips, I wanna go over the next kind of essential thing that you should be aware of before you even start editing. And that is has to do with the resolution of the video. And this basically is just referring to the height and width of the video that you're going to be watching in pixels. So for example, if we want to make a YouTube video, you know, a horizontally filmed video for YouTube or Facebook, things like that, you're gonna want the resolution to be in 1920 by 1080. So if you look over here and we create a new project, you'll see that you can change the for the resolution format to different sizes. You're pretty much wanna, gonna wanna keep it on 1920 by 1080, unless you're doing certain things like IGTV stories, which is uh, videos that you view in like that portrait mode. So in, the, in that case, you're going to wanna change the resolution to 1080 by 1920. In that case, if you want to make an IG, TV or Insta stories type of video because again, we're gonna be viewing this from a portrait mode and not the typical landscape view like you would a YouTube video. If you want to make a video that's specifically for Instagram, you would want to change it so that the dimensions of the resolution are the same. So the max you can do is 1080 by 1080. That's the highest resolution you can do. But for the purposes of this uh, video, we're just gonna keep it at 1920 to 1080 since we'll be editing as if we're editing like a normal video like for YouTube. With this format and the rate section here, you're not gonna wanna change this too much. You're gonna wanna keep it around 24 frames per second. And formatting, this is just gonna depend on the type of video that you're doing. You know, a lot of times I like to shoot video and edit in 4K, which is, you know, just improving the quality of the, you know, the definition that you're gonna be viewing the video in. But you know, most, for the most part with videos like tutorials or just talking head videos or like even this video that I'm gonna be sampling here, I do it a lot of times in 1080p, which is perfectly fine. It's a good quality to uh, edit videos in and that works. So that's just something that, but in any case, that's something you all should know in case you're gonna be, you know, it's just gonna depend on the type of video that you're editing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this sample video project just so I can make sure I'm working on the project, the specific video project that I want to work on. I'm going to open the folder that I kept all those videos that I showed you in earlier, remember raw footage, we go to sample video. And the with Final Cut Pro and like Mac computers, you, you can just select all the clips, drag and kind of drop them into the project folder. And you, as you can see, they'll appear right here. And to do this manually, you can go to File, Import Media, and then, and as you can see, there's, look, you can, you can select different kinds of media, not necessarily just video, but audio as well. In my case, if I wanted to access those same files, I would go to, go to Musicians Prime folder, again, video, YouTube channel, raw footage, sample video and the clips are right here. So I would just do the same thing, select all the clips and then I would go to import all. The next thing I'm gonna be talking about is basically gonna be considered what I see as essential actions within the editing software. Basically these are like the ba basics that you would need to know in order to kind of move around and navigate you know, the editing software. Things like cutting and shortcuts to help put things together. And I will also be going over the shortcuts partially because, you know, as the name implies, shortcuts will save you time. And for me personally, I think that part of knowing your software includes knowing the shortcuts because again, you will, with all the footage that you're gonna end up uh, editing, you know, you wanna find ways to save time. 
So that's why it's important for me to, in, in any case, to teach you how to use shortcuts. So the first kind of tool I'm gonna go over with editing is called the blade tool. And the blade tool is basically how you can, how you cut videos and, you know, organize them with, and whatnot. You know, you don't, you know, if you wanna cut a clip here and move it to another spot, you can do that. So for example, I'm gonna click this thing here and manually you can do this by going to the trim clicking blade and it kind of splices right out there. But the shortcut in Final Cut Pro, if you want to use the blade tool, you can either do Command B right on the spot that you want to do it, or you can just tap B and then click and that's where, that's how you can cut the blade tool. And you know, once I've cut with the blade tool, I can just kind of take the selected clip I want. If I don't, if I want to change spots with another clip, if I want to drag it on top of a clip, you know, so like this, you know, when it, the, this clip plays, I can just put it on top or I, if I want to put it here, I can do that. Um, but yeah, that's what happens when, you know, when you cut the blade tool and you cut a clip, you can kind of just take the, that clip that you want and put it wherever you want. Another important thing we want to think about, you know, even before we start putting clips in what we I like to call the timeline, you see I've arranged all my video clips in a certain order down here in this space. This space where I'm organizing all the clips is called the timeline. And another thing we want to consider before we organize all our clips in the timeline is how much of the clip we want before. So, you know, before you even start filming a music video, obviously you've kind of storyboarded, you've figured out what kind of scenes you want, you've decided where, you know, you want this look to go here, this look to go after it, and so on and so forth. And so instead of having to sort through, you know, what could be hours and hours of footage, you know, instead of doing that, you can just find, you know, if you know what you want to have in the video beforehand, you can kind of scan through the clip to find the spot. So let's say I clear all these videos, clear all these videos out of the timeline first. Say I want my first clip to start actually right here in this first clip that I've imported. So to start the range, I want to type, the shortcut that I want to type in to make sure that the clip I'm entering into the timeline starts there, I type the letter I in Final Cut Pro. I type, tap I and n notice how this little yellow bracket went from the beginning of, of the actual clip to the point where I wanted it to start. And then to find this, let's say I want the clip, that's first clip to end right here. Then I'm going to tap the keyword O, and that's going to let the software know this is where I want the clip to end. And to enter on the, in the timeline, I'm going to press the letter E. Now, when you type E, that actually refers to putting a clip at the end of the timeline. So for example, say I wanted to put in this whole clip here. And so I'm tapping I to for the beginning of the range and O at the end. And then when I press E, look notice how the clip goes to the end of the timeline as opposed to the beginning where this I had this first clip. So just to kind of clarify what uh, that E shortcut means. Also, another shortcut that's important to know is kind of the trim shortcut. So if you want to press the letter T, you can trim the ends of these clips. So say I want more of the, I decide I want more of the beginning of this second clip, I can t press, press letter T, click the end point and kind of extend this one further out. Or maybe I want the other clip to be longer so then I can bring this one in and then make that one shorter. Another example, say I have these clips in order, but, and I want, I actually don't want, you know, I want to organize this clip here and I don't want this clip to play anymore. To disable the clip, I can select the letter V. Another way I can also do this is to go to clip, enable, and see, look, look at, you can also notice how the shortcut appears next to the word enable as well so you can know you know just in case you forgot you can go to clip enable click that and also if you tap v you can re-enable the clip so for example say i say i want to like disable that that clip 
and say, oh, actually, you know what? I want this end piece to appear here. So I press V again and it enables the clip again. And you know, there's even far more shortcuts that I'm even si than what I'm saying now, but at least for now, these are kind of the ones that you want to know when it comes to you know, just basic, you know, editing skills. Again, it's gonna be a little bit different depending on what your editing software is, especially if you're not working in either iMovie or Final Cut Pro. But again, all the video editing software that you have, you know, essentially has these similar tools. So the next element of video editing that you kind of want to be aware about when, you know, getting to know your software is how to detach audio and adjust audio levels. Now, this is important for a couple of reasons. So, if you are filming, you know, if you're filming for a music video and, you know, especially if you're going to be pre-recording and mixing and mastering, mastering your track outside of the video shoot, you know, you're not filming a live music video, uh, you're going to, you know, naturally as you record your clips, they're not going to have exactly the sound of, you know, the video unless you're specifically recording a scene that's going to be portrayed outside of the music that's in the music video. So in any case, we're not going to necessarily want all that background noise. So to detach the audio, I'm simply just going to, so as you can see here, this clearly has some audio that's not part of the music. So I'm going to right click the clip, detach audio, and again, notice how there's a little shortcut here. I don't necessarily use this just because, you know, I'm not all, you know, sometimes for me, it's just faster to actually go and do the action manually. But in this case, I'm gonna right click, detach audio, and notice how now the audio of the clip just kind of detaches itself, you know, for lack of a better word, outside of the clip. And so, because I'm gonna be mixing, you know, this is gonna be for a music video, I'm gonna want to delete that. And I will do that with all the clips that I'm using here. Now, in most cases, when you either have someone else mixing and mastering your audio for your track or you're doing it yourself, normally when you're exporting it, you're already going to have it pretty much at a level that, uh, you know, you won't have to worry about making it too loud or soft. But, you know, in some cases you might want to need to know how to adjust the volume levels of your track. So if you, you know, I've already imported my audio here. So if I import my audio, I drag it to the timeline down below. So norm, in most cases, you're gonna, the audio is usually below all the video clips. You know, you can adjust your volume by seeing this little, you, know, you see this little line, you can adjust volume higher, lower. Um, normally it just starts out at zero decibels. If you want to adjust certain parts of the volume, but not necessarily the whole track, what you're gonna wanna do Say, for example, I don't want the track to actually be as loud here as it is normally playing in the track. What you'll see, you know, when I double click on this uh, audio track, you're gonna see this like little audio setting bar up in this right hand corner. And, you know, when you click here, you can kind of add what's called a keyframe onto the audio. And so you see this little white dot appears. Nothing really changes when you add just one keyframe, but say I want to add, adjust the volume in this specific section from here to the end of this clip. So then I'm going to click here, add another keyframe, and now notice how only this right side of the volume is being adjusted. So when you add keyframes, you can adjust the volume in that way. Now, if I want to specifically, again, if I just want to specifically edit that section, I'll either add another keyframe before or after these two, and see now I'm only able to adjust this part of the audio. And then if I want to have adjust it a little more, I can add another keyframe and you know just kind of go back and forth, adjusting it here and there, wherever I want, and so on and so forth. And you know. Again, you just have you just have to play around with it to see how much louder or softer you want it to get, depending on how much you want to adjust it. So the next aspect of you know video edit, video editing that you want to get familiar with is knowing where your title screens are. So in Final Cut Pro, this is where the titles are, and you know you can see you have some like basic ones, just like basic text. There's some ones that have like blur effects, you know, this, you know, 
and you can you know you can kind of preview what all of these titles do if you just take your like mouse key and just kind of drag over it and you see how it has that kind of blurring effect there's one that's kind of kind of these like flashing lights at the end there's one that are just kind of centered some 3d some drifting ones this one's like kind of got some dramatic text you know this one's got like a star wars entrance ferris wheel this one's kind of like as you can see it's just kind of like floating on like a ferris wheel this one kind of glows you know you, you scroll down you kind of get to know the uh, different kinds of fade ins i'm not super fancy so i don't necessarily use like a lot of these but um you know in, they're, they have plenty of options, and even if you don't necessarily like the ones that come with your, you know, like the stock titles that come with your editing software, there's plenty of people who make like kinds, all kinds of custom titles if you're looking for something very specific. Also something I want to go over is like generators, that's kind of like, I would lump that in within titles, and that's just basically just like different backgrounds you can use if you, you know, if you want something cool to go along with your music vi video or just like video project I don't you know you can use like basic black and white I don't really use these like blue and green ones too often unless it's for like a green or blue screen but that you know you don't want to worry about that right now we're just gonna stick it in the basics so in here you can incorporate some like background images if you want so getting to know like what all these look like and what they all do and you know that is kind of important when you know putting all this stuff together now with titles, um, you can just, you know, for example, take this title, you drag it across and, you know, you can put it on top. You see there how that little, or you can drag it to a different spot to make it appear in a different spot. Over here in the upper right hand corner, this is where you can type whatever title you want. You can type the text there. If you click on this little square here, which is called the transform button, again, another helpful tool in editing here, you can kind of drag and adjust where this text goes. So like this, you, you know, you can kind of see the text in a different spot. You can also adjust how long the text appears when you kind of just drag it across to the end of this clip here. And yeah, that's essentially kind of how titles work. And the final element of video that I kind of just want to talk about that you should kind of know about, know how to use, know where this thing is, are the transitions. And the transitions are just basically just going to assist with how each clip flows from one scene to the next. So if you look to the right over here, if I click on this little, you know, it looks like a sideways, like infinity hourglass type of thing, you'll see that these uh, transitions appear. So for example, if I want to fade something into a color, usually that's black in this case, I'll drag that to the end of, end of my clip and you'll notice that it kind of fades to black as you scroll over down there. Or if I want something that kind of fades in and out from one another, I'll take this like cross dissolve transition I'll bring it between th these two clips. Maybe I want to extend the time in which this transition happens. So you know, as I go over it, notice how it kind of like fades in and out. And yeah, that's how that little piece will transition. You know, if you go through the stock transitions, again, you can see there's like different kinds of crazy looking transitions here again you might not necessarily use all of these but depending on the kind of impact you want to make in your video for example some of these like different blurrer ones there's some ones that have like flashing lights light noise lens flare static film for example you know you can give a certain effect to how each scene transitions between your music videos and that can make um, your music videos look more impactful. So yeah, that's why it's really important to know where these are. So that takes care of the basic video editing essentials. I hope you found this video helpful and if at any part of the video you felt like I was going too fast, just you know, go to that part, stop, and then just kind of repeat. I know sometimes when you're first learning the process, it can be a little overwhelming, but you know, it takes, you know, with enough practice, I'm sure you will get it. Trust me, if I can do it, you can do it too.
anyways, thanks so much for watching. Please leave a comment down below what you currently struggle with in the video making process, specifically editing. What's like something, what's something you have a hard time with when it comes to video editing? Or if you have something that's not related to video editing and you're having trouble with, let me know in the comments below. I'm here to make, the purpose of me making this YouTube channel was so that I could make videos for you in order to make this video making process as easy as possible. So anything that you're got, you guys are having trouble with, please let me know in the comments below. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. There'll be a new video next Friday and yeah, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.